Got something new to show you today. It's not my new camera, nor is it my new microphone. I am unveiling the first ever edition of the Mountain Cole coffee mug. Now I know you want to buy it, and I, you will. Currently, it's listed at $99.99. This is Film Journal, episode six, day one of production. Hello and welcome. I'm happy to inform you all s two of you, that we have begun production on Mountain Cult, episode five. Uh, we filmed day one this week. I was extremely uh, grateful to have Jessica Newfield um, play a very important role. Fans of the show might be able to guess which role that is. Jessica Newfield has previously starred in Dracula. In 2010, she played Lucy Westerna. She played Lenore in Distant Aiden and Jax in Paulina. I was very happy uh, to have her on board. Uh, she did a fantastic job and I've only just begun to edit some of the footage. We have cast the rest of the film. We're gonna do a Zoom table read this week. Uh, we're gonna go over the plans and expectations for our shoot next Monday. So the rest of the crew I'll be introducing uh, on the next episode of Film Journal. I also had my brother there. My brother plays art if you've been following the series um, and we had some fun scenes uh, outside. We had a scene in the car and then we had another scene on the porch which I'll, I'll show at another time. Um, but the scene in the car definitely presented new challenges. Uh, probably the number one challenge was that there's special rigs for filming inside of a vehicle, especially a moving vehicle, and the rigs are designed to protect your camera and keep it from harm. The unfortunate part about these rigs is they're very expensive and they're very technical to set up. I personally, uh, I don't mind kind of a shaky shot inside of a vehicle. I think it kind of gives the viewer uh, a feeling of being along for the ride. I guess the only caveat to that would be uh, that it's nice for the actor to stay in focus. But um, so we shot it gorilla style and and it came out pretty good. We had to use the lapel mics in there because uh, there was just no way I could use the, my normal microphone uh, and not get a bunch of junk attached with it. So there's another clip where, actually there's two in there. So on, on one of the clips in the beginning, I, I don't need to give that away, but I do some investigative work uh, on the computer where um, you know I'm going through the web and I'm looking at this um, we'll just say an unnamed web page well experience has definitely taught me the best way to go about filming scenes like this it's tempting at first to think oh well I'll just put the actual footage that I want to use on the screen or on the TV or on the phone and the big problem with this is you get a lot of glare um, and that glare is really unwatchable so in other words you're almost better off adding a screen digitally in my opinion than you are um, filming with it already prepared that being said in episode three of mount cult i had to film the actor matt he was communicating on the phone with me the entire clip was like six seconds and i still remember uh, before we shot it he actually asked me if i wanted him to turn his phone off i said no uh, it's no big deal just just leave it on well, so he ends up talking on the phone and we kind of have an angle like this one here and you can kind of see the screen of the phone and I wasn't that worried about it. I was like, oh, I'll just edit out later. Well, that six second clip wound up taking me like two weeks um, to, to key out the screen. I actually did it all in Premiere Pro and I went frame by frame by frame uh, and it was just a absolute disaster. I hated every second of it. And I learned from that experience that if you're gonna film a screen, be very cognizant of what digital effects you are gonna do. So now whenever I film a screen, number one, I keep that screen off. And number two, I try to avoid any objects uh, passing the barrier of the screen. I have kind of figured out some little ways to do it a little easier and, um, you know, maybe not as thorough, but like this, for example, like I can put my hand and stuff in front of it and it's and you don't notice right away that there's um, a digital digital screen on there but some of that comes from learning so anyways if you're going to do a digital effect plan for it know how you're going to do it in the editing room don't just film it and be like oh i'll figure it out later because i've done that and trust me you don't want to 
Yeah, this thing is totally on the wrong side of the mug, by the way. It's really killing me. It's, it's basically a left-handed coffee mug. Q, I also have filmed Q digitally, and that's another example of a digital um, you know, screen that I used. In episode four, we had um, Michael Tyler. He had to communicate with the computer, and we kind of um, made it seem like he was talking to this um, otherworldly being online through some kind of chat and uh, had the messages coming through. But so he had, he did a fantastic job by the way. So he had to act really without another actor and then put that in later. Um, believe it or not, and I may not include this, but that, that styrofoam head was filmed in my freezer with a blue light waving to and fro and created a multi-million dollar effect just doing that. Isn't it amazing? You know, there was, there was companies that specialize in, in 3D, uh, imaging and they said they couldn't compete with that that level of um, that magnitude of digital effects so okay so this week I did design coffee mugs I'll try to get some of the footage there I've also been working on some prop design you could probably see a clip of me here um, spray painting these rods and also sawing them up and chopping into pieces It'll be a surprise down the road what that's used for, but it's definitely gonna be in the film. Resource of the day, I'm gonna do the coffee mug video. I believe it's this, I, the coffee, I'm gonna use the video where I made the coffee mugs at, with rosin coated. Uh, I'll link to it below, but check that out. It definitely helped me out. And I plan on using that for my Kickstarter, which by the way, I hope to be launching, I believe August 1st. So I'm gonna be, be chatting more and more about that if you want to uh, support my habit. Then, um, then maybe you could support me there. Uh, the tool of the week is going to be—it's going to be the filter rings and the gobe um, ND filter. So the first thing is the filter ring. So, so if you don't know what this is, it's basically if you want to shoot exterior and you're tired of your lens getting blown out and um, you know borderline disintegrating from the sun, what you can do is get these ND filters. Now. You gotta think ahead before you get them because you're gonna want uh, filter rings with them. In other words, each lens has a different uh, diameter on it. So you want the step-up rings to be able to apply to each lens, but go to the same diameter. And what I mean by that is all my ND filters are 55 millimeters. So I get all these step-up rings. This one's 52 to 55 millimeters. This one's 49 to 55 millimeters. This one's 40.5 to 55 millimeters but they all go to 55 millimeters. Uh, typically it's recommended for anybody doing video to use the adjustable uh, ND filters. And I have that too. And I got the Gove one and people said that it was nice and they liked it. Um, so you can see it's adjustable, I'll show you here. But the one thing that I don't like about it is it creates kind of this crosshatch pattern on the lens if you look at it too close when you get kind of into the darker range I mean you're not gonna see it here so I don't know why I'm showing you but you can you wind up seeing this kind of X pattern uh, and I don't like that number one number two there's seldom reason for me to change the filter and number three even though I got I think five of these in here um, I've only ever used the ND 64 that one's been perfect for me so if I were to make a strong recommendation I would say get an ND 64 go ND filter and get the filter ring Short film of the week, that's gonna be The Robber by Fireface Films and N346 Productions. It features Jaquan Henderson, Justin Livingston, and Ashley DeShotel. It's written and directed by Ryan Robinson. And this story is great. The, this guy, he breaks into this house and he's looking to rob it. And you know, he's kind of creeping around and trying to be secret. And then he finds quite a surprise in there, which maybe I should leave for the film. But, uh, but it turns out that the guy he went to rob uh, isn't exactly a saint and that turns the tables in a few uh, really intriguing ways so it's really a great story because uh, I know the confines of being limited in different scopes of things and locations and anybody who can make a story the more of a story you can make with the less you're given I feel like it speaks volumes to your writing ability thank you for coming and stopping by make sure to uh, press that like button hit that subscribe button and the last thing to do is go on eBay. You're gonna find it. It's gonna be under Mount Cold X.3750 underscore 8601024 XD500. 
and it's going to be this coffee mug and it's listed on there for a discounted price of $850. I know you guys told you $99.99 in the beginning, uh, but it went up in value since this started. So there's been a lot of interest. I've been getting calls from, from various uh, shadow governments. That's the coffee mug. That's the show. That's it. Goodbye. Good luck. Get the hell out of my room.